Hello and welcome to our discussion on Android life activity lifecycle methods. In the previous videos, um, we have seen how to um, how to create uh, the Dice Games app, which we are going to use for several concepts in these weeks, and we created the wallet activity for that. We wired the button and uh, gave it a, a behavior of incrementing coins on a roll of six. Um, and we also learned about uh, the feature of login, uh, the locket window, and checking what messages uh, you can see when you log certain behavior. So building on top of that, we are going to learn about the life cycle states and methods in this video. So uh, first of all, again, and if you have not watched the previous videos, you should go back um, and watch those. And in all these videos, um, I would urge you to follow along, not simply by viewing what's on the screen, but also working through the examples on your own. So writing actual code in Android Studio and running it, you know, if required, pause the video as and when required and do that. Um, that will be the best way of learning these things. Okay, so in this video, we are going to uh, look at uh, the lifecycle states and methods, um, what a user expects, um, you know, based on how the interaction with the activity is happening. Um, and a related point is, uh, what should happen when you rotate the device? So we'll see um, how to create an alternate layout for portrait and landscape orientations. And finally, uh, we'll identify a bug and try to solve it uh, by persisting the UI state using bundle. Recommended reading is this uh, official document page about understanding activity lifecycle. So let's first talk about device rotation, uh, which happens to be the source of um, you know, many bugs in Android. So we have seen um, you know, we have created this uh, activity um, uh, so far, and uh, let's say you fire up the app, um, click the the dice button, um, and uh, you know go ahead and earn some coins. Let's say you earn about 20, 25 coins, and at that point, now rotate the device. To to rotate the emulated device, uh, you'll find these rotate buttons. Um, you know, rotate left or rotate right. And uh, perhaps that alone won't work um, if you are doing this for the first time. So you'll have to, uh, you'll have to enable configuration, uh, sorry, enable rotation by clicking this button, which you can get to by pulling down from the top um, uh, notification bar. And then it uh, shows you a bunch of uh, shortcuts for example, the Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and one of them is also to enable or disable rotation of the device. Okay, so uh, you do that, and then uh, you can rotate the device. Okay, so coming back to this, so when you rotate the device from this state where the die is, uh, the die is showing three, and the number of coins is twenty-five, guess what happens? Y you basically reset. It resets the UI state, and all your coins are gone. Uh, so clearly, this is not the ideal scenario. Your users would not want uh, to lose all the points they had. So how do we solve this problem? Um, you know, that is the that is at the core of uh, all this discussion. So before getting to solve that problem, we need to understand a few more concepts. So first of all, let's talk about uh, the Android device um, ma resource management itself, right? So in the in the very first lecture, we talked about the limitations of uh, these handheld or mobile devices, and the primary one being the limited resources. Uh, so you have limited processing power, limited memory, and perhaps most importantly, uh, limited screen real estate. Um, as in, you cannot have a bunch of windows open at the same time and people switching from one to another. Um, there is typically only one window occupying the whole screen, although we have seen the uh, split screen feature in uh, recent versions of Android. But still, you know, uh, given the screen size and the amount of interaction you want, uh, in most cases, you are going to have one activity occupying the entire screen. So then the question is, 
what should happen when say a user switches from activity A1 to activity A2. Um, you know, let's say you're playing a game and a phone call uh, comes on the device. So uh, phone call gets higher priority and you know, you see the phone, um, phone app, uh, it's activity uh, at front, your game is, uh, is, is sent behind. So what should happen to, what should happen to A1? What should happen to A2, right? So uh, another example is uh, you are using social media like Twitter, let's say, um, and you click on a link that takes you to a browser um, or to a YouTube video or something like that, right? So once again, this is a user initiated uh, switch from uh, the, the, the current top app to some other app on the device. Um, so in, there can be several such scenarios. Um, what should happen to both the activity A1 and A2 in such scenarios? Uh, what should happen to uh, say any resources that A1 has held? Uh, should they be taken away forcibly and given to A2 if A2 is asking for those? Um, should uh, A1 continue to uh, work on those resources, you know, hold those resources? and do any computation in the background. And also what should happen when the user is done with the second activity and returns. So if, for example, you take the call, you talk to the person on the other side, and when you hang up, um, where does it go? Uh, what does the user expect, um, right? So there are all these things and uh, answers to these uh, tell us, or rather they, they prompt the developer to create a certain behavior, um, and uh, we'll see how Android you know, supports that. Okay, so I have a 30 second timer here. Um, just take those 30 seconds to think about these questions um, and you know, note down what you think should happen in these scenarios. All right, so keep those notes and we'll see uh, three particular scenarios and what should happen in those cases uh, to the current activity a little later. All right. So um, Android's activity lifecycle is at the center of this discussion. Um, Android activity lifecycle defines seven states an activity can go through and also what callback methods are called when an activity moves from one of these states to the other. Um, and usually this transition is based on user interaction. In many cases, it can be due to certain system constraints or something else like the phone call coming when you're playing the game. Okay. Um, and for transitions from these seven methods, there are six callback methods uh, which are called you are already familiar with one of them, uh, the onCreate method. That's where we created or wrote the code for the assignment on the greetings app, um, and also the code for interacting with the button in the, in the previous videos. Right. So let's look at those activity lifecycle methods. First one is initial, and this, this is the state your activity is in, when it has not even been launched yet. So this is like the, you know, the zero state um, where there isn't anything, but uh, you know, we, we conceptually consider this state as, uh, as the start of uh, uh, the uh, conceptual start of the activity. Okay. After that comes this state called created. Created is the state in which the activity instance starts appearing in the memory. It is not yet visible, uh, but it's there in the device memory. Uh, it is uh, created uh, because of the code. And, you know, for example, you can say um, the constructor has been called on it and it has populated its uh, fields and elements um, and so on, okay? From created, it quickly moves to the started state. The started state is 
when uh, the activity is becoming visible and uh, you know it can be either fully visible or partially visible and it's getting ready for interaction um, a partial visible activity is um, you know when for example you know uh, the activity is covered by something else like um, a dialog box we'll see that example uh, you know much later in this course um, after we have discussed fragments but yeah so the next uh, um, state is started and as it says it uh, it's basically preparing it for uh, interacting with the user okay um, the state after that is the resume state and this is the state where the activity is both visible and interactive and that is the only uh, state in which a user can interact with the activity and only one activity can be in the resume state at a given time in the entire system from resumed uh, so this this flow of uh, states was going from initial that is from nothing to the most interactive state now the remaining flow of activity uh, activity states is from this most interactive again back to you know the activity being uh, out of memory um, going out of memory okay so the next state is paused and it is somewhat similar to the started state but on this uh, downward path uh, what does it mean uh, it means the activity is still visible partially or completely um, but it's about to go to the background so in this state um, you know you can so rather before getting to this state or while getting to this state uh, you can take care of some resources which were um, you know allocated here between started to resume and um, make sure you uh, you you release them right so that's the purpose of the pause state um, and it is conceptually sometimes convenient to think of started and the pause states as identical or at least similar states the one after that on again this you know downward path is the stopped state which can be conceptually similar to the created state uh, for some purposes and this is when the activity is completely occluded by another perhaps including um, the home screen right so it need not be always overtaken by some other uh, activity but it can be hidden by the home screen or the launcher screen and any activity that is in the stop state can be destroyed for resources um, so you know if the system is lacking resources um, it may clear out some activities from the uh, current memory and any stopped activity is um, is a good candidate for getting wiped out and after that you have the destroyed state so this is once again where the activity is not uh, in memory and uh, everything related to that activity instance uh, is gone okay so these are the seven states in the middle and descriptions of all those states um, so the important part I and mean, everything is important here uh, but one most key thing is the resume state is the one where you have uh, you are interacting with the activity and only one activity can be in this state at any given time in the entire system so next we'll look at the um uh, you know the lifestyle lifetime stages uh, with respect to these uh, activity states so you have resumed in the foreground lifetime um, once again that's when it's visible and interactive the started and paused along with resumed are in the visible lifetime this is when you can see the activity um, although the transition between started to resumed or uh, resumed to paused um, you know or paused to stopped etc can be only momentary and not really uh, you know for the human eye and then all those along with the created and stopped are part of the entire lifetime of the activity instance initial and destroyed are not really uh, activity instances uh, because uh, or activity instance states uh, because the instances do not really exist in memory at those time 
right next we'll look at uh, the uh, transitions um, and callbacks during those transitions from one state to another so going from initial to created you call the on create method which as i said you have already seen this is where you should render the ui perform any startup logic that should happen only once per instance um, so you have already seen you know how we create um, uh, how we set the content view, how we um, extract buttons uh, and other widgets, uh, which should be available to say other methods in the app um, or the activity class uh, and so on, right? So that's what typically you will do in the onCreate method. Then from created to started, you have a method on start. This is where um, the activity is getting visible, right? So uh, any code that should be initialized uh, to maintain uh, the UI um, you know, can be called here. From started to resume, you have perhaps guessed the name on resume, but we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, before that, we'll talk about the downward path going from resume to paused. So re remember resumed is the one where user is interacting with your activity and if it's going to pause from there so um it should pause any um any any operations that should not continue when the activity is not visible typical examples are um you know uh, system resources or sensors so things like uh, gps and such um they should be stopped um and they should be discontinued or the resources should be released at this point. So they are available for uh, other apps that may be coming up and taking over um, in front of your activity. Okay, um, it's easier to understand on resume after getting a, uh, taking a look at on pause. So this is where you initialize uh, the components that you'll release during on pause um, and you know, any other initializations as well. So making the initializations that are required to start um, or get the activity in the interactive, fully interactive mode um, are handled in on resume. Okay. Let's continue uh, down this path. Uh, so from pause to stop, once again, you would have guessed the name is on stop. Um, this is where you would stop any functionality uh, that is not needed, uh, you know, while uh, the activity is not visible. Um, so any other remaining resources should be um, handed over uh, during this, this call. And finally, you have on destroy, which is where you release all the resources that you have not released yet. Um, the instance is going to be destroyed. Uh, it won't be in memory. So anything uh, you have in that, uh, even an initialized variable uh, will be wiped out. Okay. Um, so these are uh, the six transition methods. Uh, there are some other activity lifecycle callbacks, but you know these six are the main methods that transition from one state to another. Um, now, another reason why uh, the diagram shows, uh, shows uh, initial and destroyed together, created and stopped together and started and paused together is, see, when the activity uh, goes from, let's say, you know, created to started to resume, and then uh, um, uh, and there is an incoming phone call, right, continuing that example, uh, it goes to paused by calling on pause, then it goes to stopped by calling on stop. And uh, the instance, uh, your game app, you know, should not be destroyed. Um, it, it remains in the memory unless there is memory crunch on the device. And from there, it can come back at the end of the phone call. It can come back by calling on start. Uh, there is one more step there, but you know, for now the relevant discussion is, um, it can come back by calling on start and then on resume. Right, so that way also you can go from stopped to started and started to uh, resumed by following these transitions. So that way also um, these uh, pairs of states, uh, you know, conceptually you can group them together. Uh, all right. Okay, so we'll pause here and we'll start with uh, overriding um, the lifecycle methods for our current app in the next video. Thank you.